This second step is referred to as pyruvate processing. Glycolysis gave us two molecules of pyruvate. However, pyruvate isn't that usable form of energy yet, so it needs to be processed more. So before we talk about what happens to those pyruvates, we need a little bit of context. We knew that glycolysis occurs in the cytosol, but now we're switching to the steps of cellular respiration that occur at the mitochondria. The mitochondria has two membranes. One we call the outer membrane. The second one is internal, has a lot of surface area, and this you may have guessed, is the inner membrane. The space between them is the intermembrane space. The area inside the inner membrane is called the matrix. And the last part of the mitochondria are the folds in the inner membrane. So these infoldings. Those infoldings are the cristae. To be processed, pyruvate needs to go into the mitochondria to an enzyme complex which I'm going to represent as a circle called pyruvate dehydrogenase. That ASE cluing us in to the fact that this is an enzyme. So pyruvate going into the mitochondrial matrix to pyruvate dehydrogenase. So I'm going to redraw so we can make this enzyme larger. I'll keep the enzyme in gray. And if you remember, we have two molecules of pyruvate from glycolysis. And these have come into the mitochondria from the cytoplasm. So we have one of our pyruvates going into this pyruvate dehydrogenase enzyme. At this enzyme, a molecule of NAD plus will pick up an electron and a hydrogen ion. Remember those frequently travel together in redox reactions. And when it does that, you wind up with NADH. After the pyruvate is processed, we have two outputs from the enzyme. The first is carbon dioxide, a waste gas of cellular respiration. And the second is a molecule called acetyl-CoA. CoA means coenzyme A. So like we did for glycolysis, let's count our carbon molecules, keep track of those carbons. So pyruvate is going to have three carbons. So our three carbon pyruvate lost one carbon to the waste gas CO2. But the rest of the carbons, those last two carbons, are kept in the product, which is acetyl-CoA. An important thing to remember, when asked how many molecules of acetyl-CoA are formed in pyruvate processing, Many students will say one because we process the pyruvate and we get an acetyl-CoA. However, we have to remember that our glucose molecule wasn't transformed into one molecule of pyruvate. Rather, our glucose molecule was broken into two molecules of pyruvate. This molecule of pyruvate is going through the same process. So we have another molecule of NAD plus becoming NADH. 
And as an output, we have another molecule of CO2 as a waste gas. And we have another molecule of acetyl-CoA. Another way to reflect this is saying that we have two times the pyruvate, so two pyruvates. And in that pyruvate dehydrogenase enzyme, you have two NAD plus molecules becoming NADH. And you're left with two molecules of the waste carbon dioxide as well as two molecules of the two-carbon acetyl-CoA.